Hey Ramblers, this video covers chapter 9.8 in our textbook and we'll deal with the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. Now we're going to work primarily with two solids. One will be just a, a plain rectangular prism. You know, something like a shoebox would be a good example of a plain rectangular prism. The second will be a square-based pyramid, which is kind of the run-of-the-mill pyramid. If you thought of the pyramids in, in Giza, in, in Egypt, those would be square-based pyramids. So we'll be using the Pythagorean theorem over and over again in these um, problems, but what you have to make careful note of is where the right triangles are within a figure that you can use to solve for the different dimensions that they're going to be asking us for. So I'll point them out throughout the video. Make sure they get in your notes and that you're able to use them and apply them. Okay, thanks for watching, and I hope this helped you. Okay, the first of the two figures we'll talk about is a rectangular solid. A rectangular solid is also a prism. Um, it's known, it's named for the type of shape making up the base. Now, in a rectangular solid or a prism, there are two bases. They are congruent uh, polygons, and in this case, since it's a rectangular solid, we will be sure that they are rectangles. A, B, C, D is one of the rectangular bases. Looks a little bit like a square, but it's a rectangle. E, F, G, H is the other rectangular base. All rectangular solids have two bases. Between the bases are the faces. There are four faces. I've shaded in two of them point out what they are. So A, B, F, E is a, is a face. B, C, G, F is also a face. And in the back, C, D, H, G is a face. And A, D, H, E is also a face. Now, between the faces are the lateral edges. Lateral because they're on the sides. And between a lateral edge, I'm sorry, between a lateral face and a base, these are called the base edges. So there's four there, and there's four down here. Okay. As we begin to work with these figures, we're going to want to solve for different dimensions. And useful to us will be diagonals and the lengths of the lateral edges and the base edges. So FC is called a face diagonal because it's a diagonal of, of one of the faces. DB, on the other hand, would be called a base diagonal because it's a diagonal of one of the bases. The last diagonal that's useful is going to be a diagonal of the solid, like HB. Diagonals of the solid extend from one vertex through the interior of the solid to a vertex in the opposite base. Of course, there are more than just HB. EC and AG, DF would also be diagonals of the solid. Now, as we try to solve for the different dimensions of these rectangular solids, we'll be using a lot of triangles. Now, keep in mind that all of the vertices of the both bases are right angles since, it's, since they're rectangles. And in this chapter, all of the lateral faces will be rectangles. So the angle here at B and C and G and F, those are all right angles, as are the uh, vertices of the other faces. So when we draw a triangle like FBC, made up of a lateral edge and a base, base edge and a diagonal of one of the faces, that is a right triangle. And we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. Another useful triangle will be triangle HDB, which actually passes through the interior of the figure. And as you, if you rotate it a bit, you can see that it actually cuts through kind of the middle of the figure. Can I rotate it? Which of these vertex? Okay, that kind of helps you to see that the, the, the um, triangle is right in the middle. So it's in the very interior of the solid and is made up of a lateral edge a diagonal of the solid, and then one of the base diagonals. Okay. Lastly is a right angle or right triangle made up of 
half of the base. So it's made up of a base diagonal and then two base edges. All right, let's try an example. Suppose you were told that AB was 4 and that BC was 3 and GC was 12. Could you use that information to solve for HB? Well, why don't you pause the video for a moment and take a second to solve for HB using some of the triangles I've shown you in the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, well, by the properties of rectangles, I know that if BC is 3, then so is AD, which means that DB will be 5. Okay, so if DB is 5, and we know that GC is 12, well, that makes HD 12, because again, the faces are also rectangles. So now that makes this a 5, 12, 13 triangle, and HB has to be 13 units. And that's how you solve these, these problems. Now let's move on to regular square pyramids, which have a lot of the same types of problems. There's just different, uh, some different vocabulary we need to learn and some um, different tricks for finding the different dimensions. Okay, regular square pyramids really aren't very similar to prisms or rectangular solids at all. So let's look at some new vocabulary um, that we'll come across. Like prisms, they have a base, but they only have one base. And opposite that base is the vertex. So point P is the vertex of the pyramid, and it lies directly above the center of the base. Now I know that point R is the center of the base because it's where the intersection of the base diagonals is. And the line stretching from the vertex to the center of the base is called the altitude of the pyramid. And it represents the true height of the pyramid. Well, there's another important altitude, and that is the altitude of the face. And that is going to be called the slant height. So um, PS is the slant height. It is drawn from the vertex to the midpoint of one of the sides. It is perpendicular to the sides. I could have drawn it to any of the base edges like OM, JO, or KJ. And each time it will form a right angle at S. All right, there are several triangles that we'll be working with in order to um, solve for the different dimensions of a pyramid. Some of the segments that we'll be using are RS. RS reaches from the midpoint of the base to the midpoint of one of the sides, and it is perpendicular to each of the sides. So angle RSK is a right angle. Now, if I couple that with um, RK, which is half the length of one of the base diagonals, I form triangle RSK. And triangle RSK has its right angle here at S. The hypotenuse is RK. And each of the legs is going to be half of one of the base edges. So it is an isosceles right triangle. OK, let's take a look at another one. If I look at triangle PRK, PRK is going to use the altitude of the pyramid as one of the legs. The lateral um, edge will be one of the, it will be the hypotenuse, and RK, half the diagonal, will be the other leg of the triangle. Now as you rotate this, you can see that this triangle really is in the heart of the pyramid, stretching from the center out to one of the lateral edges. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Um, triangle PRS. Now triangle PRS is another triangle that's in the interior of the um, triangle. It has a leg that is one half the base edge and uh, the other leg is the altitude of the pyramid. Its hypotenuse is the slant height. And so that is a useful tr uh, triangle for to use when we're looking for either the slant height or the altitude of the pyramid. Okay, triangle PRS Oh, I'm sorry, Triangle. the last triangle I want to look at is triangle PSK, which is on the outside of the triangle. It's on one of the lateral faces, and it has the right angle down here at A, at S, and the hypotenuse is once again the lateral edge at um, PK. 
So using these different triangles, we'll be solving to find the different dimensions of the pyramid. But there are a couple of um, notes I'd like to make you aware of as we talk about um, regular square pyramids. The first is that all because it's a square-based pyramid, all of the base edges are congruent. So that's helpful to know. We also know that the faces are isosceles triangles. So in other words, all the lateral edges like PK and PM, PO and PJ are all congruent. So as I manipulate the height of the triangle, while the lateral edges change their length, they're still isosceles triangles, and so all the lateral edges will remain congruent. Okay, let's take a, a quick look at how to do one of these, um, how to solve for one of these pyramids, and then we'll conclude the video. Okay, let's take a look at this example here where they tell us that the perimeter of the base, JKMO, equals 40. And they ask us to find in part A the length of JK. We will notice that JK is just one of the sides. And since I can just divide the perimeter 40 by 4, I'll see that JK equals 10. In part B, they ask us to find PS, which is the slant height of the pyramid. And to do that, I need to get two other sides of triangle PRS. Or I can work with triangle PSK, which might be a little easier. In the givens, they tell us that PK equals 13. And I know that SK is half of the side length 10. So that must equal 5, which means that PS is going to be the third member of that triple, 12. To find the last um, part C, to find the last segment, PR, that they're asking for, I'll draw my new triangle, PRS. Now, I've already seen that RS equals 5 because it's half of a side length. And I just solved for PS. But be careful. PS was a leg in part B, but here it's a hypotenuse. So I have to do the Pythagorean theorem to find PR. So this is not a triple, although it might appear to be at first glance. But 12 squared minus 5 squared equals the square root of 119, which is the length of PR. So the trick to these is really using the different triangles that I pointed out in the video and using the Pythagorean theorem to solve. Some of them are kind of like a puzzle, but just keep at it and keep, uh, I would suggest drawing the triangles as, I, as I've done here to help you to situate them and not make the mistake of using, the hypoten using a value for a leg that is actually a hypotenuse or vice versa. Okay, Ramblers, thanks for watching. Good luck with this.